In this video, I'll go over Hune's method, another improvement to Euler's method for initial value problems. After studying this video, you should be able to understand Hune's method, analyze the error behavior of Hune's method, implement Hune's method in MATLAB, and understand how to implement a predictor corrector iteration in an ODE solver. Hune's method is another example of a one-step method that offers an improvement to Euler's method. Recall that for any one-step method can be written as yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus phi times h where phi again is the increment function. All of the one-step methods use only the value at yi and the increment function and the step size to predict the value at yi plus 1. The only difference among these various methods is how we estimate that slope with the increment function. So far we've looked at Euler's method which uses the function that defines the differential equation itself which is dy dt as the increment function evaluated at the ith time step. So it's using a it's basically assuming that the slope is constant for that ith time step. The midpoint method used a predicted value at half the time interval and then used the slope calculated at that midpoint of the interval to predict to you predict the slope as an increment function and predict the next value y i plus 1. And we saw that was a little bit more accurate because that was like using a centered finite difference approximation. So we're going to look at another approach called Hune's method. For Hune's method, what we're going to do is determine the slopes at the beginning and at the predicted end of the interval and then average them. So let's look at how this works. So we start at some ti and we'll use that slope at ti to get a predicted value ti plus 1, yi plus 1. And we'll get that predicted value using forward Euler. So yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus f at ti yi times h. Then, now that we have that predicted value at ti plus 1, we use that predicted value to calculate another slope and that slope here is f at t i plus 1 and our predicted value y i plus 1 and what we'll do for Hune's method is average these two slopes so we'll average these two slopes and come up with some other result here where this is the average slope calculated from those two results. So that average slope then would be f at ti yi which is the slope calculated from ti using calculated from ti and yi plus f at t i plus 1 y i plus 1 and put a little p there that's our predicted y i plus 1 all divided by 2 that would be the average of those two slopes and then we can work that into a algorithm to predict or to estimate y i plus 1 as y i plus 1 equals y i plus that average of the two slopes times h. So again I should put that p up here. So we have a predicted value unlike the midpoint method where we predicted a value at half the interval Hune's method we're gonna predict the value at the end of the interval ti plus 1 and then we'll take the average slope taking our dy dt function evaluated at the current time step 
plus our dy dt function evaluated at our predicted y value at the next time step and dividing those by 2. And then using that average slope times h for our time step to get to our next value y i plus 1. So let's look at how the Hume method error behaves. And we'll do this by looking at general application to differential equations of the form dy dt is equal to f of t. And we're going to look at a function without y dependence to get a sense of the error behavior because then we don't have to worry about that predictor. So in that case, we would just have that second equation, y i plus 1 is equal to y i plus f at t i plus f at t i plus 1, all divided by 2. So there's our average slope over the interval, all times h. And looking at that, we can recognize that this is exactly like integrating from ti to ti plus 1 with the trapezoid rule. And we'll use that to figure out what the error is. Recall that the error for the trapezoid rule is on the order of h cubed and that's going to be the local truncation error with each time step for Hune's method. So the global error then for Hune's method is again second order accurate since the local error is third order accurate. Now Hune's method provides an opportunity because we are using that predicted value. If we go back here and we have our predicted value at yi plus 1 and then we're using that predicted value to get a new improved value at, of yi plus 1. Well, now we could imagine taking that new and improved value of yi plus 1 and putting that in again and just plugging that right back in there and correcting the yi plus 1 value again. And in fact, that's a common approach called a predictor corrector iteration. And so if we look at implementing Hune's method with a predictor corrector iteration, what we can do is use the average slope to again calculate the slope for the next to again calculate the next time slope. So as we calculate that value yi plus 1, we'll use it again to calculate a new value yi plus 1 and then iterate that calculation until the corrected value stops changing within a desired tolerance. So to summarize the algorithm, what we have here is a predicted value yi plus 1 predicted is equal to yi plus f evaluated at the ith time step times h. And again, that's just forward Euler again. Then we'll take that now for the first iteration, we'll use that here as a predicted value, and then we'll start iterating on the connect corrector, and where we calculate a new corrected value using the predicted value and averaging that with the slope calculated from the ith time step and we'll iterate this over and over again plugging that now back in for the yi plus 1 value until we meet some convergence criterion where the new value of the corrector minus the old value of corrector divided by the new value again since that it, we're assuming that's our most accurate value 
drops below some stopping criterion or tolerance. Epsilon s. So let's look at how we would implement that predictor corrector approach. So if we want to implement a predictor corrector approach for Hume's method, this is a great application to use a while loop. And I'm going to let you code this one, and I would advise you use the framework from Euler.m to do it. And we haven't used while loops yet in this class, but there is a uh, video on while loops available that I reference in this week's lesson folder. So let's look at how you might do this. So here's our basic for loop from Euler.m and what we'll do is we're not going to use that Euler iteration. Well actually let's change that a little bit. We're going to use that Euler iteration but this is only going to be to get instead of getting y i plus one this is going to be to get like y predicted our first predicted value and then after we do that predicted value for the first time at the i time step I'm going to move this end command here so that we can have a little more space then we can enter a while loop and do something like while our EA is greater than ES, absolute value of EA greater than ES. Now we're going to iterate on the corrector. So we would have some Y corrector equal to our corrector equation. Then we need to update our y value, our y pr predictor value, and then iterate in that while loop, calculate EA, and iterate in that while loop until we meet that tolerance. The other note on the while loop is to get it to start, we need to make sure that we start out here with some EA equals 1 or some number greater than ES so that while loop will start. So you might want to go uh, watch that video on while loops and then revisit this idea before you work on coding your own function for Hune's method. Finally, we would end the iteration, the iteration, the calculation for that ith time step. So in summary, we've got for each time step, within each time step, we have a predictor corrector iteration. Using a while loop for each time step. So we have a while loop doing the predictor corrector iteration nested inside a for loop moving through the time steps. So I've given you some tips here on how to set that function up and I'm going to let you write that one this week to make sure you understand how to implement this predictor corrector approach. So the last thing I want to do is repoint, revisit the midpoint method and say well can we implement a predictor corrector approach for the midpoint method. So again we've got a predictor again but this time the predictor is only evaluating, only predicting y one half of the interval. And then we're using that y value at one half the interval to get our value for y i plus one. But there's nothing here, there's nothing in about y i plus one to improve our calculation of the slope. That would be this calculation because that calculation depends on y i plus one half. So the answer is no. We can't. 
implement a predictor corrector approach with the midpoint method. But the predictor corrector approach outlined here for Hune's method is a nice way to increase the accuracy and stability of Hune's method. And this predictor corrector approach is commonly used in other higher order differential equation solvers for exactly that reason. And the idea here is just to get a general concept of how that approach works. And that concludes this video on Hune's method.